Are you ready for the word? Are you ready to receive the servant of God? Please watch this video. Apostle John Kimani William is a servant of God anointed into the apostolic office with divine purpose to proclaim the anti-unit gospel truth and power and equip the body of Christ and bring about spiritual transformation in people's lives, cities and nations. He is the founder and general of a CEO of Kingdom Seekers Fellowship Church best in Kenya. Under Apostle Kimani's leadership, the ministry has an outreach missionary arm called Missions to the Body of Christ International, MBCI. He's also established MBCI Media, consisting of a national television, MBCI TV, and MBCI Radio. The ministry owns the largest prayer center in Kenya, known as Heaven's Gate Prayer International. He is also involved in various charitable projects, including Mercy Missions, building homes for the less fortunate, building level four hospitals, prison chapels, orphanages, among others. He is the leader of the National Prayer Committee. Apostle John Kimani Williams' destiny-defining teachings and influence have made him a polarizing figure with supporters praising his emphasis on faith, Christian living, teachings on destiny, a prayer warrior, and a great revivalist of our time. He is happily married to Reverend Naomi Kimani and are blessed with their children. Remember this 2023, let us be upstanding and welcome Apostle John Kimani Wilson. Somebody help me to celebrate Jesus in a better way. Give the Lord a shout of victory, Kenya. Revive is coming. We give you praise, our God. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Can you wave at me and say hallelujah? Before you take your seat, I want to appreciate the convener of this meeting. My brother, my friend, uh, Levin Julian Killer, thank you. And God bless you so much. I want also to appreciate our fathers and mothers of faith. Thank you so much, our Bishop, Bishop Mark Karioki. Together with uh, our mom, Levin Joyce, our father, Bishop J.B. Masinde, together with mom. Uh, our father Mambo Leo and all the fathers of the present, God bless you so much. Our international guest ministers, Apostle Grace Lubega, God bless you for the powerful ministry. Prophet Ian Dovu, we celebrate you in Jesus' name. Help me also to celebrate my wife, Lebe Naomi. Amen. Before we take our seat, I just wanted us to celebrate what God has been doing in this nation along the years and powerful prophetic messages that we have continued to receive. This tells me that Kenya has still an opportunity to fulfill her divine destiny. We are here to declare today that our destiny is not yet a potter. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, we have gone through many handles. But we are here as a nation to tell God, thank you. Can you lift your both hands and tell God, thank you for this nation. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for seeing us through all the storms that we have gone through. Political storms. In the mighty name of Jesus, economic storms. Famines and hunger. You have been our God. You have seen us through. Thank you, Lord, that you are speaking to us even today concerning our prophetic destiny. We have a reason to say thank you. Somebody help me to thank the Lord for his love and mercy. 
Pull up this nation. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We can take our seat. I want to bring to take this opportunity to bring to you the word of God God has put in my heart. And I want to appreciate all the powerful ministers who have stood before me both the local ministers and international we are all international in Jesus name this is a season for Africa and Africa must lies to her divine destiny in Jesus name I want to speak to us a message that God has put in my heart for those who are here and the many thousands that are watching online and I pray that God will give me the grace to deliver this message with clarity and understanding. I want to speak a message entitled, The Grace to Set Standards. The Grace to Set Standards. I believe this dispensation of grace has been given to us so that we can be able to set the standards that God desired from the beginning because we see that the law or those who lived under the law there were so many gaps the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 chapter 7 and verse 11 Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 11 the bible says therefore if perfection were through the levitical blessed he would for and let the people receive the law what further need was there that another place should lie according to the order of melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Allah? that tells us that perfection was not possible under the law and that is why the bible says if your righteousness does not exceed that of the pharisees then you not be able to enter into the kingdom of god i believe many people have taken grace as a way of lowering the standards but i believe grace was given unto us that we may be able to raise the standards that God required for his people. Praise the name of the living God. When I look at the Bible, I see that God is a God of standards. In this nation, we have a body called uh, Caves that was started by an enactment of a law in parliament and the work of Kenya Bureau of Standards is to see the quality of products the processes that are used the measurement in some of the products and everything that is required to produce the right standards of goods and if in Kenya we have caps I believe also we have kingdom bully of standards. The kingdom of God is interested with the right standards. God is not a mediocre. Praise the name of the living God. Let me make five statements. Number one, our God is a God who is in a class of its own. And he says, beside me, there is no other God. So our God is a God who has set a very high standard and he has said, I am in a class of my own. I am not a cheap God. There are so many cheap God out there. But our God is not a cheap God. Praise the name of the living God. So number one, our God is in a class of his own. 
Number two, God is a God of standards. As we are going to see later in the scriptures. And God does not lower his standards. What he does, God gives grace to raise the standards that he requires. That is why the Bible says, My grace is sufficient for you. It is the sufficiency of the grace that we receive that help us to raise uh, the required standards. And so to my observation, and as I'm going to bring this message, is that God's standards uh, have been compromised. But we are in a season when God is restoring back the required standards to his people. And I believe in this kind of gathering, God is preparing us. And one of the way we can get ready is by understanding what are the required uh, standards for me to be used of God. Jesus looked at Jerusalem and he cried. And he said, if you only knew the time of your visitation. May God help us to discern the times. And know that this is a season. This is a time of our visitation. But I can tell you, there are standards that God will not compromise. When I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I learn from the scriptures that God is a God of standards. From the book of Genesis, when you look at Genesis chapter 4, from verse 1, when Cain and Abel went before the Lord to sacrifice, the Bible says the sacrifice of Abel was accepted. But the sacrifice of Cain was rejected. That tells you that God has his own standards. He does not accept everything. If he accepted anything and everything, he would have said, Cain, I accept you as. Abel, I accept you as. But he said, no. I am a God of standards. When you go to the book of Exodus, chapter 20 from verse 1, God set the standards with his people. And the Bible says, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me those are standards that he is setting for his people then number four he continued to tell them you shall not make for yourself a carved image in the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath uh, that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord, your God, am a cheater's God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children uh, to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. God is setting the standard of worship and he's saying, if you want to worship me, then there should be no other God beside me. And I am a cheater's God. Praise the name of the living God. If you jump uh, chapter 21 from verse 10, God set the standard for the priests. He set the standards for the offerings. Uh, Exodus 21 uh, verse 20. The Bible says, uh, If he takes another wife, he shall not diminish her food, uh, her clothing, and her marriage rights. The Bible continues to say, Let's, let's jump verse 16, please, because of time. There's something I want you to see there. He who kidnaps a man and sells him of his 
found in his heart shall surely be put to death okay there are so many things that are spoken there but you find in the law there were many things that could cause a man or a woman to be put to death god set very high standards even in the priesthood he said no one with a defect either an eye or a leg or somebody who is dwarfed and it is not even your mistake to be a dwarf but god said you cannot come before me praise the name of the living god hallelujah he set standards for priesthood you know the rules of the game may have changed but god has not yet changed he is the same yesterday today and forever even now there are standards that god is pursuing praise the name of the living god if you go to the book of leviticus chapter 10 from verse 1 you see that god killed nada ben Abihu because of lighting strange fire then nada ben Abihu, the sons of aaron each took a censer and put fire in it put incense on it and offered profane fire before the lord which he had not commanded them then the bible says uh, so fire went out from the lord and devoured them and they died before the lord what did moses say verse 3 and moses said to aaron this is what the lord spoke saying by those who come near me i must be regarded as holy and before all the people i must be glorified so alone held his peace those his, though his two sons had died he had to hold his peace because moses told him this is what god said he has already set very high standard that you should not use unauthorized fires in the altar brethren i'm here to tell you our god has not changed he is still a god of standards and we have lowered the standards but grace came to help us to raise the required standards praise the name of the living god we can go on in the book of numbers uh, and, and deuteronomy but even if you went to the into the new testament you find that uh, from the book of Matthew in the garden of Gethsemane Jesus was crying and telling the father father can you remove this cup for me but if it is your will help me to partake of it the Bible says angels came and strengthened him because the father said this is a standard for redemption you have to take this cup this is a cause for the redemption of mankind nothing less and jesus had to go all the way to the cross of calvary and at the cross he was forsaken by the father until he cried eloi eloi my father my father why have you forsaken me he forsook him because he saw my sins and your sins upon him god does not lower his standard even your salvation is not free it was bought with a cost and it was paid for full by the blood of the lamb our god is a god who has set standards and if we don't follow those standards we may miss god's visitation you know one of the things i tell people in treat treatment when you go to a doctor the first most important thing for you to do is the right diagnosis there are so many people who have died because of misdiagnosis they were treated of sickness that they were not having 
but a good diagnosis a doctor sometimes will tell you that you just need to go and eat well you don't need a lot of medication because the condition you have requires good nutrition and you'll be up and strong so the right diagnosis today for the church is what we require so that we can be able to go back the Bible says the glory of that this latter church will be greater than of the former how are we going to do great and mighty things than the first church the first church set her standards you see in the book of Matthew chapter 16 or Mark let's go to Mark 16 verse 17 Jesus had already sent the standards for them that are going to believe and the Bible says and these signs will accompany those who believe this was a standard Jesus was trying to give for us who are going to believe in him the Bible says in my name they will drive out demons these are ordinary believers but because of their faith in Christ they are able to drive out demons they will speak in new tongues and the Bible says uh, they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on the sick people and they will get well when we get there we are ordinary believers as apostle grace was speaking to us that anasha will see somebody on a wheelchair and they'll tell them rise up in jesus name and walk because ordinary believers have been able to set the standards where they can cast out demons where they can lay their hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover to me when i read this book i see that the standards were already set but today the standards have been lowered they have been compromised anyone can say i'm a believer but when you look at them there is no fruit there is nothing to show that truly their faith in Jesus is active faith. For faith without action is death. Praise the name of the living God. In the book of uh, uh, Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. When Jesus was uh, um, just about to leave his disciples. He told them, I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. That means Jesus has spent his uh, three years with his disciples. But he is still telling the disciples, as much as you have been with me for the last three years, this does not yet even qualify you to go to the mission field you must wait until you receive power from on high and this was repeated in the book of acts chapter 1 and verse 4 jesus repeated and he said on one occasion where he was eating with them he gave them this command do not leave jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about that you don't don't leave you must wait i have equipped you you have been taught you have been trained but you must be clothed with power from on high those were the standards that were set by jesus christ that you don't just go out preaching the gospel but you don't carry the power that you require because the gospel is a demonstration of the power of God. And so Jesus told his disciples, you must be equipped with power. Because as much as I want to go to the nations, a cockroach in Kenya is still a cockroach in America. The airplane is not going to change you. If, I, if a cockroach takes a flight from Nairobi, 
and goes to California by the time you are leaving the plane you are still a cockroach so you need to begin here transformation is now you must be changed you must be equipped in the mighty name of Jesus I know when we hear about going to the nations we are excited but what are you doing in, in your neighborhood praise the name of the living God people don't know even in your place of work you are born again even you have very funny nicknames but when prophet Ian Dovu prophesies I can see your hands high up there that we are going to the nations let me tell you there are standards in this kingdom and we must raise our standards again yes praise the name of the living god work out your salvation with fear and trembling you must prove that god has called you praise the name of the living god hallelujah making your calling an election sure i'm showing the world that it is god who has called me to do what i am doing praise the name of the living god may god restore the standards for the church in the name of jesus that is the greatest sickness the church is suffering from today that the standards even for ministry Huh? even the devil himself is preaching how are you going to be distinguished from the devil and he has taken the bible he is in the church praise the name of the living god the standards must be restored have you not read in the book of Ezra, chapter 3 and verse 10 that when they were dedicating the foundations of the temple there were people who are shouting but there are others who are crying the bible says when the builders lay the foundation of the temple of the law the priests in their vestments and with trumpets and the labor the son of asa with symbols took their places to praise the lord and as prescribed by david king of Israel. the bible says with praise and thanksgiving they sang to the lord he is good and his love to what Israel endures forever and all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid look at this but many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept around when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid while many others shouted for joy verse 13 says uh, people could not distinguish no one could distinguish the house of the, sh the, the could distinguish the sound of the shout uh, of joy from the sound uh, of weeping because the people no one could distinguish the sound uh, of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound uh, was heard far away this was a dedication of the foundation of the temple of the children of Israel came from exile. They did not have as much as resources as, as Solomon had to build the magnificent temple. And now they had to put something together. But when the older priest came and saw the foundation, you know, foundation speaks about who you are. And many people are lacking in the foundation. The Bible says, those elder priests and Levites, the Bible says they were crying and they were asking, what is this? Can we compare with what we saw? Can we compare with what was happening in our time? Is there any comparison? But you see, there were other guys here who had never seen anything. And so they were shouting and they were saying, this is okay. It is good for us because they did not have a way to measure the standards they had not seen anything before church we must go back to the word of god and look at the said standard for the church 
Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against that church. It is a church that does not run away from witchcraft and sorcery and divination. It is a church that can face any demonic altar and bring it down. It is a church that can stop the work of the devil in a territory and tell the devil, enough is enough. You must get out of this family. You must get out of this village. You must get out of this city. But now, the church is in the neighborhood, but the devil is still at work. Huh? You see a church? And you see another sign put for a sorcerer in the neighborhood. Because the sorcerer cannot feel the presence of the church. There are standards. Jesus said in the book of John, there are worshippers that my father is seeking for. Those who are going to worship the father in truth and in spirit. Those are standards. That my father is seeking for worshippers. Where are they that worship God in truth and in spirit? Those are standards that Jesus was talking about. That the father is not just seeking for worshippers. But he is seeking for them that are going to worship him. Because to me, I'm always searching to see where have we gone wrong what is the problem with the church today why are we so defeated why are we so weak where are our enemies asking where is your God it is because the standards have been set so low that a believer can do whatever they want to do in the weekday but on Sunday they can come here and lead in worship. The standards are compromised. How do you expect God to move when the standards of consecration have been lowered? Just because we say we are in the dispensation of grace, grace is supposed to make us better. We are not supposed to be lower than those who are under the law. Our righteousness, praise the name of the living God, is supposed to shine brighter because we are enabled. Because grace is God at work within us. Grace is divine enablement. How can I be enabled by God? Jesus living in me. And I still continue to see and I say I'm sinning because of grace. This is cheap grace. This is not the grace that God intended. The grace was to bring perfection. Praise the name of the living God. In our walk with God. It teaches us to say no. To every form of ungodliness. Praise the name of the living God. Grace restores you to a place of authority because the scepter of the kingdom is a scepter of righteousness. Hey! How do you carry the authority and demons can see through you that the garment you are wearing is dirty and you want to rebuke them out? We once went to a conference and people were being delivered and we had so many people and because i was overwhelmed i had to call other ministers to help me and one one of them went to cast out some demons the demons told them even you you are coming to cast me out and the person had to go away saying shindwe shindwe that means he knew what he had done You know, spirits can see you through. They know what you did at night. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And you see, 
even the devil understands the standards of a believer for you to walk in power for you to walk in authority for you to be an overcomer praise the name of the living god may you receive the grace today may god give me the grace uh, to set the standards uh, of my calling uh, of my assignment uh, of my mandate uh, if there is a cup uh, i am supposed to partake uh, as jesus did uh, may god help me if there is a life i'm supposed to live uh, that is worthy of the calling uh, that i have received uh, may god give me the grace uh, jesus asked his disciples uh, could you not pray with me even for one hour those are standards and he told them you are going to fall into temptation so one hour prayer is not for you going international it's for you to overcome temptations praise the name of the living god and now you know why you are failing because you are praying 30 minutes that is why you are saying this life is hard you know to live a holy life yeah because your prayer life has not been set to the right standard a time came that the disciples uh, had to give themselves uh, to the prayer and the ministry of the world they said uh, we can co not continue serving tables uh, seeing what god is doing uh, in our midst uh, we must take uh, responsibility and set uh, the standards uh, for ourselves uh, as people mandated uh, to declare the oracles uh, of the most high the bible is about standards you want to preach but you are dusting your bible on a saturday <laughs> and you say oh the glory of this rata church will be greater than of the former you are about to fail you are going to be a disgrace in our generation you are going to bring discouragement to believers praise the name of the living god hallelujah because uh, there is a way you need to prepare your life uh, and consecrate your life uh, if you're going to stand uh, and declare the order cause of god uh, and you see god's signature when you declare the word uh, the bible says uh, that jesus followed uh, the disciples everywhere and he confirmed uh, the word uh, the preach uh, with signs uh, and wonders uh, following how do you expect god to come and put a signature on your message whereas you did not engage him when you are preparing but when you finish preaching you want him to confirm no your message will be like a chief speech in a baraza you finish and sit down no sign no miracle this is a kingdom of standards the bible is a book of standards and god does not lower his standards he gives grace for you to be able to rise if you are supposed to pray for six hours you can do it paul said i want harder than everyone else but not me but the grace of god that was upon me grace does not make you lazy grace enables you to work harder to be more diligent praise the name of the living god you don't just sit around there and say these are the days of grace uh, so i don't have to do anything god is going to do everything who told you i am a father and even if i'm a rich father i'll not allow my daughter my son to sit down and i do everything for them no they must do something as i support them praise the name of the living god hallelujah and god is a loving father and because he is a loving father grace is god loving you so much 
and say i accept you the way you are that is grace it has appeared to all men i love you so much i accept you the way you are but because of my love i cannot leave you the same way you are i have the capacity i have the ability to change you Samuel told Saul the spirit of God will come upon you and you'll be changed into a new person and once these signs are fulfilled go and do whatever the Lord has commanded you to do because the Lord is together with you that is what grace does God comes uh, and he picks you as a leech as a vehicle that was involved in a bad accident but when he beats you he repairs you praise the name of the living god hallelujah let us celebrate our father bishop masinde glory to god we honor our fathers we are walking in our labors if we see us doing something it is because they labored before us and we are walking in their labors praise the name of the living god i'm talking about grace to set the standards grace is not for us to lower the standards grace was given unto us to be able to take us where the law could not the law was written in a tablet of stone but grace came so that by his spirit he can light his law in our hearts so that no man will ask another do you know the lord because your conviction will tell you when you are doing wrong and when you are doing right as long as your conscience is alive you will know that what i'm doing is right what i'm doing is wrong unless you are still dead in your sins praise the name of the living god i'm reminded of this man who was taken in a dream and he was walking in a very shiny lord on his left was an angel and before him he saw someone coming but the person he saw was almost exactly like him although he looked more glorious more successful and his eyes were fixed on this man but the angel told him that is the person you are supposed to be but you refuse to pay the cost there are so many people who are not living the kind of life God wanted them to live. They are not where they are supposed to be. There is a lot of procrastination. When I was preparing this message, the Holy Spirit told me, tell my people to come out of, their, out of procrastination. There are people who have been procrastinating for years. You know what you are supposed to do? But you are too lazy spiritually to rise up and do it and receive results in your mandate in your calling may you receive the grace to set the standards and you are going to see god at work in your life uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above uh, more than we pray or we can think of uh, but we must be able to work out uh, our salvation uh, with fear how could God say Ezekiel 22 30 that I was looking for a man and I found none where were all the priests and the prophets God said I found none huh? I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it but I found none the issue was the standards required for a man who could be able to stand and tell God don't destroy Kenya don't destroy my family then destroy this village there are standards that are required you don't just wake up in the morning and you stop God from doing something there was a reason God said I must go and tell Abraham what I am going to do in Sodom and Gomorrah because he was not just an ordinary man he has set standards why does the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 
that the council in heaven was asking whom shall we send then i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us and i said here i am send me it was after isaiah having an encounter uh, with the lord that his standards for him to be released and to be sent were raised otherwise he was still a prophet but the heavens were asking whom shall we send you know because of the mandates of this nation god could be asking whom shall i send but we are still here with our ipads and by big bibles and we are saying lord we are international but god is saying whom shall i send no one has set the standards for the mandate uh, for the assignment hey may god raise men and women who are going to set the right standards that when you step into a nation you will program that nation spiritually even the witch doctors and the sorcerer they will understand something has confused uh, our spirit liam as it was with elijah in mount Carmel, that the gods of Baal could not answer because elijah confused uh, the spirit liam of the gods of Baal may it be the same to you that when you enter into a nation when you enter into a territory oh my god you bring confusion in the camp of the enemy you destroy the highways of darkness in the mighty name of jesus arise and set the standards for your mandate God will never lower his standards but he'll give you grace to be able to raise the required standards and once you raise the required standards God will say I'm here to perform my word that I have spoken over your life otherwise you may be walking with the prophetic words for tens of years over your life but nothing is happening because the standards for those prophecies are not yet expressed by the kind of life that you are living and god is a god of standards that is why the bible says uh, not everyone who will be able to enter into the kingdom liberation the bible says and them whose names were not found in the book of life they were cast into the lake of fire because there was a standard to get into heaven remember jesus giving a parable and said there is a man who prepared a feast and when he prepared the feast all the invited guests were busy and he told the servant go in the highways and the byways bring everybody those who deserve and those who don't deserve and when they were brought the master was walking around and he found someone who was not having the light cord of dressing and he was told man how did you get here even if i'm looking for anyone they must have the right dressing get him out praise the name of the living god because they are standards as much as he can pick you up from the dust he is going to give you the grace for you to become what he wants you to be he has the power to change you he has the power to transform you praise the name of the living god uh, until you become that is why god is saying uh, jacob i know you are a worm but i will change you i will make you i know you don't meet the standards uh, for what i want to do with your life uh, but if you allow me praise the name of the living god that is why the bible says the sacrifices of god uh, are a broken heart Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. When you go before the Lord with repentance, with brokenness, and tell God, I know I don't deserve it, but you can mold me. You are the potter. I am the clay. Make me to become the kind of vessel you want me to be. When you surrender, your ability to yield is the greatest sacrifice you can be able to offer to god 
because of your calling because of your mandate that is why god broke the socket of jacob because jacob was chosen from birth god directed him so the issue of calling and being erected was an issue but here is a man who is just struggling for blessing that oh god i will not let you go until you bless me they say don't you know that you are a deceiver the blessings are there jacob i loved you the bible says that uh, when the children were not even yet born before they had done anything good or bad god said jacob i have loved esau i have hated but why are you now coming just to struggle for the blessing why can't you struggle with the change with the standards that are required for your life for you to become the kind of person i want you to be under this church we have today many people are just struggling just struggling for blessing but no one cares about transformation about being changed by god about becoming what god wants you to be no one is going before the lord and crying oh god change me when he blesses you when he gives you a promotion when he has used you to perform a miracle you still go back to him and tell him lord continue to change me continue to transform me continue to fill me with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, at least now I know I have a few more minutes. But I want to wind up. I will continue tomorrow on how we are supposed to set standards in our life. This is something that God taught me some years back. I was wondering, what criteria does God use to bless people? And then God started teaching me about His standards. Uh, and the standards are required from different people because of the way that God wants to use you, because of your level of maturity and many other things. But I want to tell you, brethren, when I read the Bible, I see a book that teaches me all the time about standards, 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 standards that God requires. And so today, I want to pray that God is going to give us a grace uh, to be able to raise our standards. Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter 14 and verse 25, when he saw crowds following him, he looked back. Hmm? Now great multitudes went with him. And he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Those are standards. It's the same way God said in Exodus chapter 20, that there will be no other God before me. Jesus is also saying the same thing. Uh, that God cannot take a second position in your life. When God comes, he says, I must be first and not the second. There must be no other God. Your husband, your job, your calling, your gift can be a God. Don't look for gods of stone and wood. They are more than gods that today we have in our lives and God says there is no other God beside me Jesus said if you want to be my true disciple then I must take the first position in your life brethren I feel the burden that God has that we may rise up as a nation that we may rise up as Africa and become all that he wants us to do this is our season this is our time but we can miss this season if we don't set the life standard the spirit of antichrist is at work and the work of the spirit of antichrist is roaring standard the bible says he'll come with counterfeit miracles if you know today one of the biggest challenge we have in the marketplace is to get original goods when you are buying a 
spare part for your vehicle you must ask is this uh, original when you go to the chemist you must ask is this generic why because we have a problem that the standards have been lowered and there are so many many counterfeit things that are in the market that is what the spirit of antichrist is doing even in the church the church lowering the standards what where did this some of the things we see today come from that today a marriage of a man and a man a woman and a woman can be joined in a church because the standards have been lowered and that is the work of the spirit of antichrist we are going to see a great battle even in our churches that when you want many people to come into your church you have to lower the standards that is not my key praise the name of the living god i must engage a different key if people are going to follow me they must have the same dna we are making it together to heaven we are going to walk in holiness and righteousness praise the name of the living god we are not going to lower the standards for people to come into our churches we cannot allow the spirit of antichrist to compromise the standards in our churches in the mighty name of jesus the bar must be raised it does not just take the voice to see it takes a lifestyle to worship god praise the name of the living god it does not take the ability to be eloquent and memorize scriptures it takes uh, the grace of god upon your life paul said in first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17 as i finish that there is a way you can preach the gospel and the cross of christ is of no effect for christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with the wisdom of words lest the cross of christ should be made of no effect other versions say the cross of christ is emptied of its power so that the cross only remains in our churches have you not heard that today in the west you may go to a church but only later to find it's not a church it's a bar because the cross is still outside there for mockery that we have changed your church into a bar into a brother that is how the devil want to mock the church making the cross of no effect when we preach uh, the gospel with words of wisdom uh, and eloquence but we don't depend on the power of god i am not a motivational speaker praise the name of the living god i have been called to speak from the throne of grace hallelujah i am not a lecturer no i have been called to speak the oracles of the most high that is why when i am speaking you can receive your healing you can receive your freedom jesus said the words i speak to you they are life and they are spirit they are not just words they carry the supernatural they change the atmosphere they reprogram your destiny in the mighty name of jesus the words i speak they spear the crowd of darkness and bring down the strongholds of the enemy oh my god because i am not a motivational speaker i am not a lecturer praise the name of the living god so that the cross of christ will not be emptied of his power may we go back to our churches and tell god how did we remove the boundary stone because the boundary stones have been removed today there are no boundaries in the church if you read the bible there are boundaries god has set boundaries for priesthood but although today we are kings we are priests do you think there are no boundaries there are still boundaries and they are there in the word of god that is why god killed in the new testament ananiah and Sapphira. they died in the new testament because god said if people want to trace me they must be truthful in what they do in my presence there must be standards even in the new testament god is a god 
or standards. I am speaking to someone who is here, who is watching me, who God is watching and he is saying, won't you rise up and set the required standard. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20, the Bible says in a large house, they are not only vessels of silver and gold, they are also other vessels of wood and clay. But the Bible says, he who cleanses in a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. But the Bible says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purpose, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. May you set the standard to become a vessel of honor that God can use in this nation. Every time God wants to do something in a territory, it is also determined by the vessels that are available, by the vessels that are prepared, by the vessels that are consecrated. We can miss a move of God because there are no available vessels to carry what God is releasing in a territory. We are here to declare that God will find a man. He will find a man in this city. He will find a man in this nation. He will find a man and a woman in Africa. We are not going to miss our visitation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody will be willing to pay their cost. And say here I am Lord. Send me. I am ready to set the right standards in my life. I am coming out of procrastination. I know the things you have told me to do. I know the things you have convicted me. The separation you want. The consecration you want. The kind of prayer life that you desire from me. I connect with grace uh, to set my standards uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, the time to walk, uh, the talk uh, has come uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we must walk the talk. Uh, Kenya, we cannot continue saying uh, that we are springboard of revival. But our standards uh, are still very low. In the mighty name of Jesus, where are our worshippers uh, who worship the God of heaven uh, in truth uh, and in spirit? Uh, where are the ministers of the gospel uh, who are consecrated uh, to the ministry of the word uh, and prayer? They are spending time uh, before the God of heaven uh, and telling God, uh, change me Lord. Uh, Make me to become uh, the kind of vessel that you want me to be. Some of you, God has called you to be prophets. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, like Jeremiah was told, uh, that if you want to be my, my mouth, uh, if you want to speak my very words, uh, you must be able to separate uh, from your mouth uh, the worthless the, the, the worthless things uh, you cannot go around talking uh, and talking and gossiping uh, and you expect uh, that I'm going to use your mouth uh, to declare what I want to speak uh, to this generation uh, somebody must set the standards uh, in the mighty name of Jesus uh, Jesus wanted the cup uh, to be removed uh, but God said uh, I can only give you grace uh, because you must uh, partake the cup uh, according to your mandate, uh, according to your assignment. Uh, this suffering uh, was a portion for you that you may become. Uh, it is a portion uh, that is going to wire you and to change you to become the kind uh, of vessel that I want you to be. Receive the grace today. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I release somebody into their mandate uh, by helping them to raise the required standards. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, we must bring back the boundary stones uh, in our churches. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Someone God has been speaking to you for years uh, and you know what you have been called to do. But don't compare yourself uh, with other people. It is you that God has called. Uh, set your standard. Uh, 
God wants you to become a vessel of honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Shut up, Aganda, because everyone who carries his own load, you have your own burden, you have your own assignment. Hey, Nairobi, God is asking, Whom shall I send? Kenya, God is asking, Whom shall I send? Can somebody respond and tell God whatever can hinder me to miss my mandate, my assignment, patch it, reka maganda, patch me, O Lord, reka bahanda, reka bahanda riba, reka bahanda raba, reka maganda. Why should our enemies ask, where is your God? Shata Maganda, Reka Baganda Rima, Reka Baganda Rima, Reka Baganda Rima. Don't we worship the same God? Shata Maganda, Reka Maganda Ma, Reka Maganda with Peter, Reka Maganda with Paul. Receive the grace today. To set your standards, uh, receive the grace. Uh, the grace is God at work in your life. The grace is God enabling you to do what you're not able to do alone. Uh, to live the kind of life uh, that you cannot be able to live uh, in the fresh uh, alone. Uh, grace is God giving you the power, Shatta Baganda, to spend time uh, in your prayer closet. Uh, Grace is God giving you the ability to fast uh, in a way that you cannot be able to do it alone. Uh. Reka Maganda. Grace is God giving you the ability to offer sacrifices uh, that are acceptable to God uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh. Reka Maganda. That is the grace of God. Uh. Reka Maganda. Grace. Uh, Shatama. To set uh, your standards. Uh, Receive it uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, oh, somebody is going to rise uh, from this conference. Uh, Shatta Maganda. May God find a people. Shatta Maganda. That he can use. Uh, Shatta Maganda. Vessels of honor. Reka Maganda Bahanda. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. Rise up on your feet if you can. We must rise to the required standards. Not by mind, not by power, Aha. Aha. but by my spirit. Yes, Selaba. There are things you cannot be able to do in the fresh. But when you connect, Shatara Baganda, Reka Baganda, they become possibilities. They become realities in your life. Shatara Baganda, Shatara Baganda, Rima, Reka Baganda. Oh Lord, somebody is saying yes. Here I am. I am winning, Lord. Give me the grace. I am willing, Lord, to rise. Shatta Rabaganda Rabahanda Ba. Shatta Rabaganda Rimahanda. How can I remain where I am when there is a high calling upon my life? Shatta Rabaganda Rimahanda. Shatta Rabaganda. There is an impartation of grace. Shatta Rabaganda. Shatta Rabaganda. Some of you, by the time we come to the end of this conference, uh, you know what you are supposed to do. Shatta Ramaganda Rabahanda. Shatta Ramaganda Ribahanda. Shatta Ramaganda Rabahanda. Shatta Ramaganda Ribahanda. Shatta Ramaganda. Some of you in your dreams, uh, God has already shown you what you want to do with your life. Uh. Oh, He has confirmed. Uh, what you want to do with your life uh, now rise up uh, and set the right standards uh, for that mandate uh, for that assignment uh, shatter uh, magada shake off uh, the old nature 
in the mighty name of Jesus and put on Reka Baganda, the new nature. Reka Baganda Rima, Reka Baganda Rima Handa, Reka Baganda. The Bible says we have been given great and precious promises that we may share in the divine nature. We can share in the nature of God. The Bible says, Be ye holy because I am holy. We can share because of the promises we have. Shatara Baganda and the enablement that comes from the Spirit of God. Receive an impartation of that grace now. Now, I see the rising of a mighty army, of a people of power, of nation changers, of mega churches. Reka Baganda of financiers of revival Shata Baganda graces in the marketplace Reka Baganda in every mountain Reka Baganda of influence Aname is rising Aname is rising Yes Lord Yes Lord Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing. Even in this atmosphere. If you are sensitive, connect with the wind of the Holy Spirit. Shatarabagandaba. Reka Baganda Rabba Shandaba Reka Baganda Rabba Shanda Rabina Reka Baganda Rabba Shandaba Reka Baganda Rabba Shandaba Have your way, my Father. Help us to rise. Help us to rise. Shata Rabba Ganda Riba Reka Baganda. We have no excuse. Shatara Baganda, Reka Baganda Rabashanda. Let us pray together. Listen to me. The theme of our conference is Jesus the Messiah. Remember, in the time of Jesus, there were many other people with the same name, Jesus. But what made a difference in Jesus is that he was the Messiah. Messiah means the anointed one. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. It is the anointing upon Jesus that made him to be different from other Jesus because he was Jesus the anointed one may God bring a difference in your life today in this conference because of the calling and the mandate upon this nation I love Kenya and I don't want to see my nation missing her divine destiny. I know there are many people here who carry a seed of greatness. But the greatness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for. And the cost he is willing to pay for it. You don't just become great. There is a cost. And there is a cost behind every greatness are you going to take your greatness to the grave as it is said that the richest place is a cemetery are you going to die with those prophetic songs because you are not able to yield and surrender for God to unlock your full spiritual potential won't you allow this generation to see the glory of God through what you carry. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Shetara Baganda. Reba Shandala. 
I want to pray a prayer that God will help someone to raise the standards in their life so that they can be able to agree with God for God to fulfill that which he has promised for their lives and not only for their lives but for this nation and for our generation we are to blame if this generation will not see the glory of God just because we lowered the standards too low that there is no difference today between the believer and unbeliever between the light and the darkness we must restore the standards that are in the word of God the Bible says if someone calls himself a believer and he is living an immoral life don't even eat with him so that you not feel comfortable to continue with that kind of life let them be embarrassed so that they can change their way of life today we eat with them we drink with them and we don't care the kind of life they live Jesus is still asking whom shall I send? Some of you are deliverers in your family. If you don't rise in that family, the light of God will never shine in that family. But if you set the standards, oh my God, God is going to use you like a Gideon. You bring down the altars of Baal and you release the greatness in your life and in your family you must set the standards i bring down the spirits of religion oh my god the forces of darkness that has caused us to sit down and just watch things happening and we cannot rise up to the occasion and tell god i'm ready to work out my salvation that your light may shine through me and this family may see the light of God. Thank you, Father. Is there somebody today who is saying, Lord, I want to raise my standards to your standards. God has been speaking to my personal life of the kind of standards they require. And I am asking for grace. You could be there. You can join me. You don't have to come in front because we are many. But we can tell God, if you give us the grace, and you say the grace is sufficient, I'm not going to depend on the arm of the flesh because the arm of the flesh is too weak. But I look up to the mountains from whence my helps come from. My help will come from the Lord. It is only you who can uphold me with your righteous light hand and help me to become all that you want me to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, nations are waiting for you. Oh, don't allow blind people to die with their brightness. Don't allow those with cancer to die with their cancer. They are waiting for you. Only the God has shown you that He is calling you to be a healer. He is calling you to declare His oracles to the nations. Have you not seen yourself in stadiums with white people all around waiting for you to speak the oracles of God? Receive an invitation of grace to raise the standards for your mandate. For you are calling uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, rise up uh, from procrastination uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and declare this is the hour, this is the season. Uh, I receive the grace I need uh, even now. Receive an invitation uh, of the grace. Uh, yes, uh, it is coming upon you like a fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, in your bones, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, shelter, be soft uh, in the presence of God. Uh, 
Let the Spirit of God come upon you and change you. Change your prayer life. Change your lifestyle. Release the praying anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Release the grace to live a holy life. Release the grace for the word to lead the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. With understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Shatter Baganda come from the ankle deeper into the knee deeper to the waist uh, that you may swim uh, Shatter Baganda into the river in the name of Jesus uh, surrender come out of ordinary Christianity refuse to be an ordinary believer refuse to be an ordinary minister of the gospel uh, when the heaven is asking her, uh, whom shall we send? Uh, refuse uh, to be clay or wood. Uh, declare, I'll be a vessel of honor in my generation. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let there be an impartation of grace. That the things you have been calling us to do, the separation you have been asking from us, oh God. The prayer life you have required of us. The diligence in study that you have been requiring from us. Let there be an impartation of grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. In the mighty name of Jesus, sir. Somebody have accepted to set their standard. Uh. Somebody have accepted now. Oh my God. Uh. Let there be an impartation, oh my Father. Deliver us a rising. Uh. Save us from Mount Zion. Uh. They are rising. Uh. They are going to bring salvation in the land. Uh. Shut up, Baganda. Break up, Baganda. Every prophecy is a call to prayer. Do you have a prophetic word? Uh? That is a call for you to pray. That is a call for battle. Paul told Timothy, the prophecy is made concerning you. It's so that by them, uh, you may be able to wage uh, the good warfare. Daniel, uh, when he understood uh, the 70 years uh, are over, he started praying and fasting. Uh, Nehemiah, when he received the burden uh, to rebuild the wall, uh, he spent time uh, in prayer and fasting uh, until uh, he received uh, the grace uh, for the mandate. Uh, receive. Kori bashanda rabada. Kori bashanda rababose. Shata rabaganda rababuria. Reba shanda rabaganda rababosaya. Shata rabaganda ribasaya. We just want us to reach our hands before the Lord as a cry and a prayer that oh God I'm willing to set the right standard I'm willing I'm willing Lord and I feel in my spirit I don't want to embarrass anyone but you are here and you're a minister of the gospel and you know there are things that God has been speaking to you to set the light standard. And you are saying, Lord, this is my word. Don't be ashamed. Just come in front here. And tell God, I'm willing to set the light standards. In the name of Jesus. Just walk in front as a way of telling God, yes, I am willing to set the light standard. Yes. Selaba kanta rabashanda. You are saying, my greatness will not be a bote. I am asking only for the ministers of the gospel. It's a sign of our humility before the Lord. It is our sign that, Lord, we desire not to be passed by you. As you are visiting others, do not pass by me. Only for the ministers of the gospel. Only for the ministers of the gospel who are saying, Yes, Lord, I can't afford to miss this season. Yes, O oh God. 
Shatarabaganda ribahanda rababosaya. Shatarabaganda rababoshe. Rebahanda rababoshanda rababosaya. Some of you, you know, and you know, you know, you know, and you know that you carry greatness. That there is something more than what you are doing. Hey! Jesus. 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 Selabaganda rababoshe. Mekahata baganda rababoshanda. Shatarabaganda. It is until Isaiah was touched with pots of fire from the altar. May God touch you today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let the holy fire come upon you to be consecrated for God and for this generation. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Son, you are not going back the way you came here. Yes. Yes. You are not going back the same way. A holy fire will be upon your life. 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 A holy fire. Oh. I don't have a lot of time. Listen to me. Let me pray. Listen to me. With humility, I want to give you this short testimony, a personal testimony. I was in Akuru. I was struggling with the ministry. With less than 10 members. I was trying to do advertisement. And God told me, as much as I sent you to this city, you don't bring people just by advertisement. You release them in the spirit. And God told me, don't look at the people who are coming for the prayer occasion. It is you that I have called. If two people will come, they are helping you. It's not about the crowds. It's about you. And God told me, start going to those cashiers alone. If two people come and join you, it is you that I have called. We must set the standards. It is us. It must begin with us. It's not going to begin with the crowds. It's going to begin with us. for organizing prayer meetings for other people it's over organize the meetings for you and tell god it's me who requires the touch who is called into this ministry of prayer in the world i want to pray now that there will be an impartation in your life and i want to pray that there will be a shift in our lives as we say yes lord yes lord touch me Touch me. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. What are you supposed to do? Some financiers are here. And you are always watching what others are giving. But God has called you into another level of sacrifice and commitment. But you are just comparing yourself with other people. You will never become what God has called you. If you are always comparing yourself with other people. You must rise up. And set the standards. For you are calling. For you are mandate. In the name of Jesus. Can we all pray together. As we ministers who stand here agree. I want you to pray this prayer after me and say Lord Jesus. I come before you. I receive your word with humility. That you are a God of standards. I know. I cannot lead your standards. 
by the arm of the flesh only by your spirit and by your grace Holy Spirit coordinate all the graces that I require to set the standards for my assignment for my mandate Holy Spirit coordinate those graces to come upon me today and now in the name of Jesus receive those graces now receive those graces now receive those graces now receive the graces you require let them be coordinated by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the praying anointing you require the grace for holiness the grace to give the grace for consecration all the graces that you require receive them now in the name of Jesus yes yes Lord yes Holy Spirit yes Holy Spirit yes there is a mighty army that is rising in this season saviors deliver us I release them I commission them in the name of Jesus as they set their standards oh God I lead them into their mandate I lead them into their assignment in the name of Jesus yes let them receive uh, the gifts uh, oh my god uh, the anointings uh, the capacity in the name of jesus Koriba Shanda Baba Salta Baganda Shanta Rabaganda Ribahanda Bashanda Reka Baganda Rabashanda Reka Baganda Rabashanda Some of you carry mega churches I unlock those mega churches in the name of Jesus 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 Reka Baganda Rabashanda some of you your prophetic intercession is going to change territories i release an invitation of that prophetic intercession to change territories to change territories to change territories in your spiritual womb in the name of jesus something is being planted receive it Oh my God. Oh my God. Kela baganda basha. Kela baganda rabasha. Father, forgive us for lowering your standards and help us from today that we may set the right standards for the church in our generation we worship you and we praise you in jesus name amen amen, amen. god bless you you can take your seats thank you lord thank you lord i'll let the worshipers take over as we transition to the next session just be soaked in the presence of god those who are watching online I pray that God will give you the grace to set the standards that God requires for your mandate, for your assignment. It's not enough to talk. We must walk the talk. May God help us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.